So we were learning the Misad Yasharim. We had class number one two weeks ago. We're going to proceed with the second class. The um, we're, we wrote that there's many, many books of self-improvement. Like uh, literally 10 minutes ago, we learned the Sefer from the Gra, from Evan Shlomo. But the, the great Rabbi Sral Salanter that started all the yeshiva movement, that happens to be my yeshiva in Baltimore, is named after him, Neri Sral. He said, based on what Rav Chaim Velazhener said, that the, the godfather of all books of Musar is what? Path of the Just. Mesilat Yesharim. So now he wants to go ahead and explain why is it so important that a person has to have... It says some people, they become expert in Talmud. Some people become expert in Halakha. But he said it's a shame. Nobody becomes an expert in to know how to become a perfect servant of Hashem. You understand? So he says, Ki en chasidut adam. He says, guys, I want to tell you something the Ramchal says in another book of his, Derech Hashem, very important book. God willing, Hashem should help us. Everybody pray after we finish Derech Hashem. He, uh, Misad Yesharim, there's another very important book. It's like the Encyclopedia of Jewish Thought, Derech Hashem. And then there's another one that's like the book of Emunah called Da'at Tevunot, which explains why there's so much suffering. Anybody that doesn't know these three books is really missing a lot of backbone on what Jewish Judaism is about. But he, he, the Ramchal says something else, is that in this world, the Zohar says is the world of darkness. Olam Haba is the, is the world of what? Of, of, uh, light. of light. Because here, people call good bad. They call bad good, right? We see the Sha'im have all the power, Sadiqim, everybody <coughs> spits on them, nobody respects him, right? So, we have to understand something. The Neshama is like Lakers, right? You know, there's, it's scientifically proven when a soccer team or basketball team when you have home court advantage, it's a higher percentage that you're going to what? Win. The neshama here does not have home court advantage. Because the neshama is godly. This world is what? Physical. It's dark. This is what the Ramchal is trying to say. He says, do you think to fear Hashem is going to come to you naturally? By osmosis? I'll never forget, the first time I started learning Gemara was in 6th grade. And my first Rebbe was Rabbi Schreiber in Emek. Shout out to all the Emek alumni. He says you can't learn Gemara by osmosis. If you don't put 110% of your head in the Gemara, are you going to understand it? If one ear is closed, one ear is open, are you going to understand the Gemara, Elliot? No. So you have to understand that same thing. Am I naturally just going to come fear God? <laughs> Am I naturally going to have a pure heart? A heart full of, free of jealousy and ulterior motive? Because you know, the ultimately, it says, You shouldn't give a million dollars to yeshiva because, oh, everybody going to say, you respect you. Why should you do a mitzvah? Only because what? Kol ma'asecha yu l'shem. Not Lashem Kavod, not Lashem other things. So he says that loving God, having a pure heart, none of this is, is, is naturally embedded in our heart, right? So it says, You need to, can you buy something without money? Even Bitcoin, right? You need some type of currency to buy something. Right, Solomon? So in order to buy and acquire fear of God, love of God, a pure heart, you're going to need to learn Musar. It's not going to come by osmosis. It's not going to come naturally. Right? Right. So it says, it's not going to come naturally, right? If you don't do anything, your body's going to grow, right? But this, you proactively, that's the word we're looking for, proactively, specifically, you're going to have to push certain buttons and really rip and sweat to not be jealous, to not forget God. Because guys, 
automatically, the second you become a billionaire, a millionaire, you know when people, they're not so successful, they're anav. But when they become strong, they say, Kohi, Bootsem Yadi, Asali Etachayil, Hazet. People forget God. Right? And it says that it says, It says it's not like sleeping or getting up. No, that's natural. But to love God is not natural. You need to proactively go after it. Like King Solomon says. It says, It says, so he says, the only time you're going to come and actually find fear of heaven is if you, imagine if you, if let's say they have an IPO, right? And they say, if you come, you know, you've been a real estate broker, Solomon. So let's say they say, if you wake up five in the morning, we're going to do a business deal, you're going to buy a million dollar property for a thousand dollars. What are you going to do? So You're going to wake up 4 a.m. <laughs> so he says, Sha- King Shalomo says, if you go after Torah and mitzvah, like you go after money, then you're going to, then you're going to be successful. But if you're Tambal Shah, uh, da, 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 da. are you going to become a Hasid? Are you going to become Sadiq? Are you going to become Talmud Chacham? No. So he says, all of these other things that you see so he says for sure you're going to have to see it's like uh, you know I was trained to be a CPA besides being a rabbi always you have to see in life What's the source of you losing in, like, what, what, what do CPAs have to do? They have to audit companies, right? Like Price Coopers and Waterhouse. Because in a business, this business, it should, it should be making a million dollars a year. There's a reason why it's only making a hundred thousand dollars. You have to go to see the reason why you're, you're, you have to, because a lot of times people are corrupt. They cook the books, you know that. Like Enron and... You have to see what is causing... See, the Ramchal, he wrote the Mesilat Yesharim to see what causes us not to fear God. What, what's the mafsidin? Like, I was just learning with Rabbi Eli that's giving a class back there. One of the worst possible things that can destroy your spiritual well-being and your neshama is a bad friend. So we have to learn Musar to say, hey, this life is like a... Like Rabbi Nachman says, kulo gesher sar me'od. This, this, in this world, we're like on a tightrope, like a, a narrow bridge. If you if you space out, you're gonna fall to Jahannam. You're gonna fall. If you if you're not careful, what you're doing, why you're doing something, how you're doing something, what's gonna happen? It's very dangerous. So he says, you have to see what's the mafsikim. You have to see. I want to, for example, fear God. So we have to pinpoint exactly like a science. A, B, C, D. These four things, if you do, you're not going to fear God. So don't do them. Don't go near them. You understand? The Ramchal tried to make self-improvement into a science. And that's why they say this is really the godfather of all the self-improvement books. There's many books. There's a Chobat HaLevavod, right, Elliot? There's many books. There's a Reshit Chochmah. I learned it with my family. But... He's very, the, the beautiful thing about the Ramchal is very systematic, right? Which is like the Rambam. I said that in my previous class that the Rambam, he took Gemara and made it encyclopedic and very clear. The Ramchal has that same power for Kabbalah and Musar, that he makes it very clear. Step one, A, B, C, D, E, you know? You, you follow this path. He's, he says, if you follow everything he says, it's going to be like a ladder. In the end of the ladder, you're going to get divine power. Ruach HaKodesh. You understand? So he, the Ramchal here says that, um, he says, we, we have to put time. If we just learn Gemara, but we don't learn Musar, we're not going to see, what are the things that causes me to hate another Jew? What are the things that cause me not to have a pure heart? So he says, We have to see what's the currency. First of all, what causes me not to like God, not to love God, not to fear God? Let's cut that out of my life, right? 
Right? Mama Kesi taught off. Nadali. I'm sorry to tell you this, guys. It makes me cry, but sometimes your best friend, if every time you sit down and talk with him, he says Lashon Hara, he says dirty jokes, he says Letzanut, you have to cut him out of your life. The, 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 we are here not to have a good time. Hashem created us with a mission. We're like the Navy SEALs. We have to go save life, right? Let's say there's a hostage. If you don't get to him within the next 24 hours, Al-Qaeda is going to blow his brain out. Same thing here. Hashem, we're like Hashem's Navy SEALs. We have a mission. We can't just go play patty cake bakers, man. We have to, Hashem created the world for a mission. So, you with me, Elliot? So it says that, he says that if you don't go after it proactively, you're not going to acquire these specific things which are called um, love of God. And really what we're looking for is one word. Spiritual self-perfection. Spiritual self-perfection is only going to come if we proactively put time. That's why it's so important to do what? Learn Musar. So he says, It says, No good Jew, no Talmid Chacham, no wise person is going to deny that you have to have a pure heart. King David says in Tehillim, Lev tahor barali Elohim, veruach nachon hadesh bekirbi. What? Is anybody that is true and has integrity to Torah say, oh, it's good to do a mitzvah, not for Shem Shamayim, L'Shem Kavod. No. Everybody's going to... But he says that... Everybody says that we have to have a pure service of God. Solomon, I'm sorry. But if somebody... Every mitzvah he does is just fake. He doesn't really love God. He just show off. Is that really what Hashem wants? No, not at all. Hashem doesn't like fakers. Okay, in the beginning, obviously, to get somebody in the door, like a baby. Okay, first time you want to give tzedakah, first time you want to do a mitzvah, do it l'shem shalol l'shem shamayim. But mitoch shalol l'shma ba l'shma. In the end of the day, you have to not be like a, have the brain of a two-year-old. In the end of the day, you have to do a mitzvah because you love God, because that's the right thing to do, because you fear God. So he says... It says that uh, the, 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 ultimately, if somebody is full of gaiva, 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 you know what gava is? Some people, they only care about three things. You know what that is? Me, myself, and I. They can even the whole day pray, but it's all show off. They're not doing it to Hashem. You understand? So everybody's going to agree that that's disgusting. That's not good. That's a separate issue. Right? It says Hashem knows your ultimate motive. You could fake everybody in the world besides your wife and God. It's hard. <laughs> Women also. It says, It says, What are we going to answer to God when God says, Why were you not serving me for the right reasons? Why were you fake? Why were you not... Why, why was your service of God not as perfect as it could be? What are we going to answer? Because here's the thing, the Ramchal says in, in, in Da'at Tevunot, what does it mean that we're created in the image of God? God is the most perfect being. If we take the Torah and Musar as our guiding light, we can also be perfect, right? We could also do things L'Shem Shamayim. We could do things that are not ulterior and fake, right? Just for show off. So he says that he says, this is not just the dessert. This is not just the sizes. This is what it's all about. To be real. To be, to do, serve God for the right reasons. That we cover all the bases, right? Listen, if a person learns in yeshiva and kolel day and night, but he doesn't know why, he do, he's not doing it because he loves God, is that good? No! He has to do bedechilu urechimu, urechimu dechilu. Al pi kabbalah, al pi arizal, every mitzvah we do, he says, L'shem yachot gudsha berichu, u'shechem teh, bedechilu urechimu, 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 which means, every mitzvah I do is because I love God, and I'm do, not doing it for the sake of people to honor me. And like the egel, like the golden calf bowed down to me. No, I'm doing it because I love God and I fear Him and I fear God and I love Him. So he says, He says, See, this, this makes me sad because in a lot of yeshivas, they do this. He says the whole day, they learn pilpul. Why Rashi said like this? Maharsha, this, this, it's good. 
But then, if you don't learn Musar to say, hey, momento. Do I have to love God enough? Do I have to fear God enough? You understand? So it says that um, He says, why do I even have to do this? Or like I, the worst thing, that I, I cry for myself, not for you guys. I cry. A lot of times we say Beracha. Like my own, I have a neighbor, he comes to my house a lot. I say, come on. You say Beracha, Baruch Atah Hashem Shakol Elokeinu Melech Alam Shakol Nibir. You don't say Hashem's name right. Why? What? Yeah, they, they have to give you a ticket. Say that you're, you're not, you're not. A lot of people. What happens is after a time they pray so many times, and they say bracha so many times that it's just fake. It's, it has no soul. The mitzvah has no neshama. It's just it's like a robot. It's like Baruch Atah Hashem Kolam Shakol Nivar. The bracha not tadare not sardare. It's not real. So he says it's mitzvah anashim alumada. It's just saying, oh, I'm doing it because my dad did it. But not that I know why I'm doing it and I'm doing it right. So it said that, You have to see what is real fear of God. What is real, real love of God? And what's the branches of it? It says, guys, this week's parsha is talking about the, the Ramchal says later in his book, Paro is just the symbol according to the Zohar. There's a Paro in all of us. And that is becoming a workaholic. Because he tells you, you need to have a $10 million house. You need to have a Rolls Royce. So what does the guy do? He works on Shabbat. He doesn't learn any Torah. He doesn't daven with Minyan. He doesn't do anything. He says, this world is a world of darkness, I told you the Zohar says. We get so imbibed in sexual pleasure and pleasure and eating and ca- and getting drunk and uh, I broke my heart. Somebody close to me said that she saw a seventh grade girl getting drunk, eating Jack Daniel. We're living in a world where it's so much, you know, there's so much drugs because people want to forget why they're living. They don't want to live. <laughs> Even if you're not on drugs, people, they want to distract themselves. They don't want to ask themselves, why am I here? Right? Why, why did I come here? What's the reason for existing? You understand? So it said, this world, it, ca- it causes us to forget our mission. You know why? So it says, "Halo tishakak v'talag al pishe yudanu chovata vi haava gam ken kilo nishtadel likvo ato belibenu bekoach." So he says, "You have to push it into your heart. The fear of God, right? You have to, you have to proactively focus on it. It's not going to come automatically, right? That's really anything in life, anything good in life. If you don't sweat, if there's not blood, sweat, and tears, are you going to get to it?" Are you going to become a nurse in John Hopkins if you don't work for it, Elliot? No. So, it's, it's, um, it's, it says that it's the same thing. How are we going to be... Guys, David HaMelech, if you read Tehilim, all of Tehilim is that we have to become Davuk with God. Every second, Shiviti Adonai Lenegdi Tamid Kimimini Balimut. We have to get to a, a, a place where in, we're so infatuated, so addicted, so enamorated, so obsessed with God that we don't even forget Him one second. And His Torah we shouldn't forget. It says, Lo yamush sefer Right. Every second we have to do mitzvah. Every second we have to think about Torah. Every second... Ultimately, we human beings have this capacity that we could become davek. We can become attached and cling, which means we, have, we can become glued to God. To not forget Him even one second. That's why it's so important we have to go to Israel. We have to go to see the great tzaddikim. Because when you're, you're with a great tzaddik, you feel. This guy, Shekhinah is with him. Because every second he's thinking about who? Hashem, the Shekhinah. So he says, 
How are we going to have pure thoughts if we don't go after it? And not do things for fake reasons. And then we have to learn about Midot. We have to learn Musar. Because look, there's people, they were the greatest Talmud Chacham. Like Yeravam ben Nevat. He was, but he was always Ga'ava. Everything he did was because he, he, more than he loved God, he loved himself. So he was willing to do what? Make all of the Jews, 10 of the tribes of Jews become idol worshippers just because he shouldn't look small. So if you don't have humility, you could have all the Torah in the world and then you're going to become the worst human being in the world. You understand? So he says, our midot, like anger. If somebody doesn't, work, doesn't realize that he has to have self-control, it says, divrei chachamim, Sometimes I want to tell you, it breaks my heart. I have family like this in Israel. Sometimes the father can be a tremendous sadiq, but since he's too harsh with his kids, he kind of want to beat them up. They go off the derech, right? The guy knows a lot of Torah. The guy knows a lot of baracha. He even loves God, but he didn't fix his 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 his, his midah of kas. It says, whoever gets angry, what does it say in the Gemara and Zohar? The, the God goes away from him. And it's like, what? He did idol worship. Gemara Shabbat. It says, Kol ha-ko'es ki'ilu avad avad azara. So the Ramchal says, if proactively we don't go after to break our bad habits, is it going to happen automatically? No. No. We have to learn... Rabbi Saul Salanter said, it's easier to learn all of Shas than to break one bad habit. To break one, right? So he says that, he says that uh, ultimately, who's going to fix all our bad midekot? And who's going to, who's going to bring us to what? The right way. It says we have to also be like a microscope. Because the Ramchal, what he wants you to do is, he not only wants you to become... He really is a perfectionist. You know he only lived 40 years? But some people, they waste their life. He did in four, 40 years what it takes 400 years of other people to do. So he says that... He says, not only do we have to teach it to ourselves, Musar, we have to teach other people also. Because everybody, one out of a million people is not going to have, everybody's going to have one bad characteristic. Some people are lazy, some people are angry, some people are ga'ava. Ga'ava is they're uh, full of themselves. They're haughty. So it says, "Umahu Meshalamo, like I said before, Baruch Shekivanti. Im tevakshena kekesev kematvonim tachbeseno as tivan et Hashem." He says, "If you go after fear of God, like you go after jewelry and pearls and gold and silver, then you're going to become finded." Enu amir as tavin filosofia. He says, "That's not if you go. It doesn't say you're going to understand philosophia, or you're going to understand science, or you're going to understand." Uh, health and become a doctor or you're going to become a great uh, judge or you're becoming going to great, become a great halakha, posek. It says what? Yirat Hashem. Which is what? Fear of God. So it says, It says it's, it's a tragedy. Some people, they'll go learn every Gemara and Shas. They'll go learn but they're not going to put time on fear of God. So he says, Musar, ultimately, we have to also, a half an hour a day, we, half an hour, hour a day, not, not more than an hour, but at least an hour a day, we have to learn these book of Musar to see, hey, am I, do I have good characteristics or am I really full of myself, full of ga'ava, full of ego? Am I, or am I, God forbid, an angry person? By the way, that's why it's so important to get angry. Because before, when, if you ever have any doubt, if, you're, if you think you're perfect, just ask your wife. She'll tell you all your problems. You know? They, they don't mind. So it says that, 
למה לא יקבע אדם לעצמו עתים לבחור ישראל? He says we have to put specific time to learn מוסר. אם מוכרח הוא בשריץ זמן לבטנו ולבטנו ולבטנו. He says it's ridiculous. We have, we have time for everything under the sun, but then we don't have time to audit ourselves and see if we're really growing and becoming a better Jew, becoming closer to God. Are we really fearing God more? So he says that's not right. And we'll just finish it with the last paragraph. והנה, הכתוב אומר, הן יראת השם אין חכמה. In, in uh, the book of Eov, Job, chapter 28, Pasuk, 28-28, you can go look over there, it says, what's the ultimate wisdom? Listen, you know, a lot of the Nazis had two PhDs. I had a doctor here, he was my friend, he, he did his uh, UCLA, they gave him a PhD, he did, he did his thesis based on, do you know a lot of the Nazis had two PhD, not one PhD, Doctorates both in, th in like science and health. But in the end they killed six million Jews like ants. Ultimate, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate wisdom is fear of God. If you're not fear of God, you have nothing. I don't care. You can be the most, you know, Einstein came from where? He came from Germany. They were very refined. The Germans, before World War II, they used to say it's forbidden to have a small zoo of monkeys dancing for people because it's animal cruelty. And then they went and killed six million men, women, and children. So it says, it says that the only thing that matters that's why the Gros says, he says, Reshit Chochma Yirat Adonai. What does Reshit mean? Rashid means the, the reason for, which means why do we learn Torah to fear God? We don't fear God to learn Torah. What's the goal of learning Torah? This is what? Let's say you know all of Torah by, by heart, all of the Gemara by heart, all of Halakha by heart, but you don't do one of them. And you're a nasty person and you lie and cheat and steal. Is it worth it anything? The Zohar says it's like a, the Torah is the greatest diamond in the world. Is a diamond worth more than billions and trillions? But what is it if it's in the nose of a pig? He said, if it's a person, if a person, chas v'shalom, doesn't have fear of God and is not humble and everything, is it, is it worth, would you go put a diamond in the nose of a pig? If the person's like a pig and disgusting, has no manners, and his uh, ego, gaiva, 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 like Rav Shalom, it doesn't, so he says, he says, he says, nothing, Ramchal says, nothing else is worth real other than what? Fear of God. Fear of God. He says, you can't just also do it superficially. You have to go deep, deep, deep into it. And for sure to perfect it and bring it into your body. Like I said, when I was learning in Yerushalayim, in the Yeshiva Mir, the greatest Baal Musar of our generation was Rav Shlomo Volbet. So I had a guy, he was sitting to me, he was from England, he was from London. He told Rav Volbet in Elul, between the day of Selichot and Yom Kippur, he learned all of Mesilat Yesharim. He was learning it quick. He said, I have a question. Should I go learn Rabbeinu Yonah now, Sharet Teshubah, or learn Rambam Hilchot Deot? Rav Volbet told him like this. I'm so happy he shared this with me. He was sitting right next to me. He said, Rav Volbe told him, you have to learn Mesilat Yesharim 40 times. The 41st time, after you learn it 40 times, the 41st time is going to start affecting you. So that's what Ramchal is saying. Ramchal is saying one thing to learn something, one thing to what? Actually, action, action, action. It's, it's not easy. Listen, people are willing to die and not change themselves. The guy smoking, he knows it's killing him. If you're driving you know? Yeah. It says, So he says, don't think Hasid to become a Sadiq and Hasid is just go dip in mikveh and go jump in the snow. Ramchal hates that. He says, to become a true Sadiq and Hasid, you have to look. You have to refine your characteristics. Make sure you don't have ego, you don't have gava, you don't have kas. You're not a faker. You're humble. You understand? It's not just these superficial things. Oh, I jumped in freezing cold water. I became like uh, the best person in the world. No, it's not that. That's very, very thinking like an ant. That's thinking like superficial. That's not kosher. So he says, 
He says, stupid people think like that. Ela divreshel emuta michi. He says, Musar, Elliot, ultimately, the goal of Musar is to make you such a, is to, is to make you angelic. Is every, is like, we, we have a neshama as a diamond. Musar is to shave off all the, the part of the diamond and polish it. So this person, when we look at him, every part of him is perfect. His tefillah is perfect. His midot, perfect. His love of God, perfect. His fear of God, perfect. It's not just a superficial thing. Oh, I jumped in a freezing cold mikveh, and then I became thing. The Ramchal rejects that. The Ramchal doesn't like that. And may Hashem help us. That's why my Rosh Hashiva, Rav Weinberg, said, that's why automatically we always have to reject Christianity and all the cults. Why, if, if, if you could become perfect just by living in JC overnight, then why give us 80 years of life? God gives us 120 years of life. 100 years, inshallah, everybody should live 120 years like Moshe. Because every year of life we can become better. Life is not so... It, that's why I'm trying to tell you that the, the Ramchal, it's just like a doctor. A person, if he doesn't kill himself, can he become a doctor? No. So for sure to become a true servant of God and fear God and have good midot, it says, it's really, really a lifelong process. It's not going to happen overnight. That's why Ravi Saul Salanter again said, he said it's easier to learn all of Talmud, which has thousands of pages, than to, just to change one bad character trait. So we should never become depressed. We should know. It's going to take time, like everything in life. It's a, it's a lifelong mission. And if we try our best, it says, taher God says, if you open for me, if we open for God, like an eye hole, Hashem is going to open for us fear and love of God and growth, like that of a banquet hall, like a wedding hall. Hashem should, Hashem ya'azrenu al-devar kavot shemecha, shalom.